Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to create a crushing block prefab similar to the thwomps in Mario or a hydraulic press. Now, the reason why I wanted to create this prefab is so that we can use it in our group Unity project. If you'd like to learn how you can participate in this group Unity project, then check the link in the description below. I've also included this prefab in the Level Builder Unity package for this group project, but I'll now show you how to create this prefab. Now, real quick, I'd like to demonstrate this game mechanic. So here we have our ball and we have the crushing block. And if I put the ball underneath the crushing block, you can see that it destroys our ball. Now to create a crushing block inside Unity, you're gonna to wanna to start with an empty game object. So you can right click in the hierarchy and then select create empty. I've then renamed this object and I've added another empty game object as child. So I can right click on this object and then select create empty. And I've renamed this child object to transform. This is going to be the object that we'll be animating. That way we can position the parent object wherever we want in our scene and the crushing block will animate in place. Now as child to this object, we're going to add one more empty game object and a 3D cube. So you can right click on this object and select empty game object and we'll right click on it and select 3D cube. The empty game object I've renamed to scalar and the 3D cube I've renamed to trigger. For the scalar object, we're going to add one more 3D cube so you can right click on it, go down to 3D object and select cube. And this object I've renamed to block. Now all we need to do for the block is move it up in the Y position to 0.5. This will make it so that we can scale our scalar object in the Y position and it'll make this block get taller or shorter in the up direction. For the trigger object, we want to add a box collider and set the is trigger bool to true. We then want to edit the size and position of this collider so that it fits at the bottom of our block object and extends just a little bit below our 3D cube. We then want to set the tag of this object to be something like crusher, after which we can start animating this object. And so we'll select the parent object and we'll go over to the animation window. And here we want to create three new animations. The first I've called crush, the second I've called reset, and the third I've called wait time. For the crush animation, we want to add the position property of our transform object. And we'll start this object in the up position. And so I've raised it up to five in the Y direction. Then at frame five, we can add a keyframe to keep the same position. And at frame 15, we'll move the block back down to its origin. You can then jump over to the curves chart and you can select each keyframe, right click and set the tangents to linear. For the reset animation, we want to add the position property for the same transform object. And at frame zero, we want to just keep the block at its origin. And then at frame 60, I've moved it back up to five in the Y position. We can then do the same thing on the curves chart. And in the wait time animation at frame zero, we want to put our block in the up position and we'll add a keyframe at frame 60 and we'll keep it in the up position. Now, once we've created these three animations, we need to set up our animator. And in the animator window, you should have your three new animations. And we want to set the wait time animation to be the starting default animation. And so we'll right click on it and select set as layer default state. We then need to create the transitions between each animation. And so you can right click on the wait time, select make transition, and we'll have it go to the crush animation. We can then make a transition from crush to reset and from reset to wait time. We'll then select each of these transitions and we'll make sure that has exit time is set to true. Exit time will set to one and we have fixed duration set to true and transition duration and offset are set to zero. And we'll do this for all of them. And the next thing that we want to do is add a parameter to our animator. And so under the parameters tab, we're going to click the plus arrow and we'll select float. I've then renamed this parameter to wait time. And once we have this parameter created, we'll select our wait time animation and we want to check the parameter box next to multiplier and the parameter should be set to wait time. This will make it so that as we change this parameter value, it'll change the speed of our wait time. And so we'll be able to extend the time between each crush animation. Now by creating these animations, an animator component should automatically be added to our game object. And so the last thing that we need to do to this object is add a script and the script I've called crusher and we'll go ahead and open it up. Now inside the script, we need to add three new variables. The first is an animator called myAnim. The second is a serialized field of type float called wait time. And the third is a serialized field with a range of zero to one. This is a float and it's called animation offset. 
Then inside the start function, we want to initialize our animator variable. And so I have my anim equals gig component, and we're looking for an animator. We can then set our wait time parameter. And so I have my anim dot set float, and we're passing in wait time. And then for the value, we actually want to pass in one divided by wait time. And this is because the animation speed value is what's going to be multiplied by our wait time parameter. And so in order to have a longer animation, we want to have a slower speed. And since our animation is one second long and the default speed is one, the speed will become whatever we multiply it by. And if our speed is say three times slower than its default, then our one second animation will become three seconds long. And if our speed is 10 times slower, then our one second animation will be 10 seconds long. And so by doing one divided by wait time, it allows us to enter in the time in seconds we want this animation to be. Rather than having to enter in 0.5 for 2 seconds long, 0.25 for 4 seconds long, and 0.1 for 10 seconds long. For the next line of code, we're going to change the offset for the start of our animation. That way, if we have multiple crushing prefabs in our scene, they're not all in sync with each other. And so I have my anim.play, and I'm passing in wait time, which is the animation, not the parameter. And then I have negative 1 for the layer, and I'm passing in our animation offset for the value. Once we have the script, we can save it and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we can add our crusher script to this object. And I've set the wait time to 3 so that there will be roughly 3 seconds between each crush animation. And then I can just use this slider to change the offset, or the start time. And once you've done this, you can create a prefab out of this object by dragging it into your project window. Now that handles the actual crushing mechanism, but now we want to create a script that we can add to any object, and if that object is then under this crushing mechanism, it'll then destroy the object the script is attached to. And this script I've called ball crush, and we'll go ahead and open it up. Now inside the script, all we have to do is add the onTriggerEnter function, and inside this function we'll create an if statement where we're checking to see if other.tag is equal to crusher, which is the tag that I added to the trigger object, and inside this if statement we're calling destroy and we're passing in game object. This will make it so that whatever object the script is attached to will be destroyed if it touches the trigger zone of our crusher. Now you probably want to do more than just destroy the object, that's why I have another line of code that I've commented out because in our ball rolling game, I'm actually instantiating a particle effect when the ball gets destroyed. We'll probably also have the particle effect play some sort of sound effect. You also might not want to full on destroy the object itself. For example, if it's the player and the player has some important functionality even when it's dead, then destroying the player object will remove that functionality. In which case you would just disable all the visual and physical attributes of the player object. But once you have the script created, we can save it and we'll go back to Unity. And inside Unity, we just need to attach our ball crush script to our player's ball object. Once I've done this, I can test out my project. And just to show you the animation offset, I'm going to drag a few more of these prefabs into my scene. If we wanted to, we could also scale these objects up in the X and Z directions. I'll change the offset of two of these. And I'll change the wait time of one. All right, so here I have my ball and I have my three crusher objects. And you can see that the timing is different for each of them. And now if I were to drive the ball underneath one of them, you can see that the ball is destroyed. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create a thwomp from Mario or a hydraulic press mechanic in Unity. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And please subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos.